Well, hey, everybody, good to have you in service with us here today. But God bless you to you. Hey, we are in the final installment in our series called Dare to be Different. I'll tell you more about that here in just a second. First of all, I want to look back into this camera and say a big hello to our incredible church online family. Like, there's so many people coming to us from all over America, from Florida to Pennsylvania to Oregon, to uh, Washington, Wisconsin, Iowa, here in the great state of Texas. And I want to give a big shout out to all the guys and gals in every single department of corrections around America. Come on, everybody. Would you make them feel welcome today? God bless you guys. Thanks for being in church with us. Hey, here's what I realize, that God is doing something so special in and among us that we are one church that happens to be meeting in many, 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 many different rooms. And it's the honor of our lives to be able to, uh, to, be able to bring this message and this service to every single one of you. Um, before I get into the message, uh, you can pull up your message notes that are available on your Life Fellowship app so that you can follow along. But let me just tell you that next week I'm so excited because we are going to be launching our Seeds Vision campaign. Like the Lord is bringing us to double kingdom impact as we get ready to launch a second campus in Anna, Texas in August of 2024. And so next week, I'm going to begin to unroll that to you and begin to share with you, number one, who our Anna campus pastors are. And I'm just telling you, God's brought us the cream of the crop. We're going to reach the city of Anna and beyond. And then as well, I'm going to be sharing with you an incredible financial miracle that God has performed that is moving us closer towards uh, launching this campus and impacting that, that region of North Ta Texas where everyone is growing to and beyond. So you guys just buckle your seatbelts, everybody. I promise you this, 2024 is going to be the greatest year of impact that this church has ever experienced. And it's not coincidental that you're a part of what is happening here. Now, today, I want to just let you guys know that I came ready to preach. Now, I just need to know, did anybody come here today ready to help me out, huh? Okay, so let me just let you know that this message today is going to be the most encouraging message that you actually don't want to hear. I can promise you, in fact, I'm going to start it off by saying this, that there are many, many, many things that Jesus promised us as believers. But there's a number of things that he never did promise you. He never promised that you'd be rich, never promised that you wouldn't have a rainy day on your vacation. He never promised you that your heart wouldn't get broken because of the person that you're dating. He never promised, like what happened to me just yesterday, I woke up, walked into my living room, and there was a drip coming through my ceiling because of my roof, it leaked. And then right after that, I go into, into the restroom, and the basin of the toilet had cracked somehow. And there's water all over the floor. And then the same morning, I get a call from my son that he had had a, he had hydroplaned across four different lanes of traffic, slamming into a wall to only hydroplane the other side to almost flip over the wall, totaling the car. Like he never promised you that you wouldn't have difficult times and some problems and tragedy. Instead, this is what he actually promised you. He promised that the world would hate you and persecute you. Welcome to Life Fellowship, everybody. Aren't you all glad you came today, huh, you know? Because I just came with one, one goal in mind, and that is just to make you feel really good about yourself. That's why, yeah. No, let me show you what Jesus <laughs> actually, what he said. He said, if the world hates you, don't freak out. Keep in mind that it hated me first. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. So if you happen to miss some of the previous weeks, let me give you a little bit of a context so that we are all on the same page. Um, Peter is writing to a group of very hurting, very badly persecuted Christ followers in Rome. Uh, 
A lot of the persecution is coming from one different individual. His name was Nero. He was the emperor of Rome. I mean, the guy was so twisted, he killed his mama. And how many of y'all know? I mean, it doesn't get any worse than killing your own mom, right? Like, he killed his mom. Killed his first wife, killed his second wife. He, history records and believes that he's the one that's responsible for the burning down of Rome. Like, the guy was twisted. So you fast forward to today. And there's all kinds of persecution that is still happening throughout this world. And it doesn't matter where you live. Now, there are some places that the degree of persecution is, is way um, elevated. People say, what about in America? Well, we face persecution here. It's just not to the same degree as other places, but it's persecution nonetheless. In fact, in every single article that you would study today, they tell us that persecution against Christians in the world today is at the worst point in human history. One article I came across said this, that every month there are 322 Christians that are killed for their faith. There are 214 churches that are burned down every month. Every month, 800 Christians will be tortured, beaten, or raped for their faith. So depending on where you live, that pendulum of persecution could swing one way or another. Some places of the world, wherever you live, if you serve Christ boldly, you will die for your faith. You will die. Other places, you will be rejected by your family. They will turn their backs on you. You might even lose a job. You know, for you, you might not get invited to a certain party. It's all persecution. It's all persecution. And so today, we're going to let Peter speak to us about this topic. And I believe and I'm praying that God is going to take this message today and he is going to inspire you to live boldly for the one that gave his life for you. So he said this in verse number 12. He said, dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials that you're going through as if something strange was happening to you. So Peter's writing these Christians and he says, hey, hey, Christians, um, don't be freaked out when because you're living boldly for God, you experience ridicule, adversity, opposition. Don't be shocked. And I would say the same thing to you today. Hey, don't, don't, be, don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. When because of the way that you live for God boldly, that you experience significant spiritual opposition. To which some of you are probably thinking, well, honestly, Pastor, I don't, I don't remember the last time that I experienced spiritual opposition in my life. Well, then let's talk for a moment. I want you to imagine with me just for a second. Imagine that you and I are playing soccer against each other. You're out on the field, and for me, <laughs> I'm sitting on the bench. I'm, I'm playing the water bottle flipping game. I'm, I'm playing video games on my phone. I'm, I'm flirting with that cute little cheerleader that's over there. Her name's Tatum. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not even paying attention. Question for you. Are you even remotely concerned that I'm going to make any kind of significant difference in the game? Of course not. But imagine if I was a good player. And I'm not water bottle flipping it. I'm not playing video games. I'm not flirting with anybody. I am focused. I'm lasered and I'm watching everything that happens. I'm going to tell you what, the second that I get into that game, you are going to pay attention to me and you are going to do everything that you can to stop me because I am now a threat to you actually winning at the game. Same thing is true spiritually. Same thing. So if you're a Christ follower, you're on the Jesus team, you got the Jesus jersey, right? You're on the team. Um, but there's so many Christ followers today that are, you're sitting on the bench. You're not in the game. This is the most encouraging message you didn't want to hear. <laughs> like you're just, not, you're just not in the game. So you show up to church. 
Maybe regularly or every so often because that's what you're supposed to do because you're a Jesus follower and you're on the team. But you're not believing God for miracles. You're not praying with other people for God's mighty righteous hand to move on their behalf so that he would move and see incredible things happen for them. Like you have gifts and talents and abilities and you know that if you were to employ them into kingdom circulation, man, you would make a difference. But sometimes you self-disqualify yourself. And you think, well, I don't know what kind of difference I could actually make, even though you know that if you put your gifts into operation, man, you would make a difference for Christ. When it comes to generosity, it's not really there. You, you, you don't really pray, you're not specific, you're not intentional, you're not strategic about taking your time, your talent, your treasure, like vesting your, life, your generosity into the work of God so you can advance the kingdom of God forward so that we can make massive steps forward in touching people's lives for Christ. Like it's been the longest time since you've led somebody to the Lord. It's rarely, if ever, if you bring somebody to church, like your life is not making a difference. You are sitting on the sideline but let me tell you this the minute that you get in the game your enemy is going to take notice hey everybody this is the most encouraging message you didn't know as you needed in fact I'll say it like this um, God actually has great destiny on your life and when I look at you when I see those that God has brought into this place you're not those that want to sit on a, on a sideline. You are those that say, I want to live this one and only life for the only thing that matters, and that is to make an eternal impact for Jesus. Because in this place, there are world changers. There's continent movers. There are those that say, you know what? I will rise up. I will be different. I will make a mark on this generation for Christ. I will live a life that matters. I will live a life that lives on. I'm going to live it. In fact, let me say it like this. Imagine with me that there's a young guy that just enrolls into the military. So he gets enrolled in, and a little bit later, he comes back and reports to his commanding officer and says, Sir, sir, like you wouldn't believe it, they're shooting at me. The commanding officer looked back at him and said, Hey, private, you know why? Because you're in a war. Can I just remind you today, Christianity is not about comfort zones. It's about battle zones. And when you engage in a battle, you are going to face opposition. The forces of hell are going to come at you. You're going to face, you're going to face every demon of hell coming against your life because he is not happy of the fact that you're not seated on the sidelines anymore, but that you are in the game. Like you're making a difference with, with your life. And let me just say that if you've never faced significant spiritual opposition, it actually could be an s- indicator that you're not on the front lines, that you're not making a difference with your life the way that God has always intended. But today, I just want you to know that I believe in you. I want you to know that God has something great on you. And that today it's going to be the most encouraging message because something's going to stir on the inside and you're going to take a step into your preferred future. In fact, Peter writes to these Christ followers that are hurting and he actually says this. He says, don't be surprised by the fiery trials. Now, when Peter says, don't be surprised by the fiery trials, most scholars and theologians believe that he's speaking very literally. Because these Christ followers were the ones that Nero, this emperor, would take and he would dip them in hot wax. He would tie them up and tie them to a tree, light them on fire, and almost like a human candle. They would illuminate the night sky for the big parties that Nero would throw. And Peter is saying, hey, listen, don't don't be surprised by these fiery trials that you're in the middle of. I think if he was speaking to us today, he would say it like, Like this, he would say, hey, don't be surprised. If you're in the Middle East and you could decide to go all in with Jesus, that you will give your life for him. Don't be surprised if you die a martyr. I think he would say to my my friends that are in South Asia that maybe came from a Hindu background, 
Hey, don't be surprised if you commit your heart and life, your everything to Jesus Christ, that you, your family may turn their backs on you. You might lose your job. You might begin to experience extremely dangerous persecution. He might say to a freshman in college today, hey, hey, don't be surprised if you don't get a second date because of your stance for purity. He might say to you, hey, don't, don't be surprised if, if maybe at Thanksgiving or Christmas or maybe that different event that you're at that people make fun of you, that they talk about you because they know that you are a Christ follower. But hey, everybody, that's okay because God didn't call you to blend in. He called you to stand out. He called you to be Different. We're not going to sit on the sidelines allowing our life not to matter just for things to move by. No, no, no. We're going to get involved. We're going to make a difference with this one and only life that God has given to us. So he continues on here in verse number 12. And he says this, instead, be very glad. Now, time out. Isn't that different? Wait a sec. You're telling me I'm experiencing persecution. I'm supposed to be not just glad, but very glad. Yeah, you'd be very glad because these trials make you partners with Christ in his suffering so that you will have a wonderful joy of seeing his glory when it is revealed to all of the world. Question, why is it that there are so many of us that would say, you know what, I've really not experienced often, if rarely, if ever, opposition in our life. Why is that? Personally, I don't necessarily believe that it's your fault. I actually think that culture has conditioned us to seek comfort, pleasure, and ease. I mean, think about it. Isn't it true for you? I'd rather have a comfortable conversation with somebody than one that's con that has uh, confrontation. I'd, I'd rather have a, uh, a good day than a stressful day. We in culture today... We pursue comfort and ease at every level. And we even actually do it in the name of Jesus, right? Oh, Lord Jesus, give us a good day today, right? And bless us. Bless the food to the nourishment of our bodies. Protect us. May the sun come out. May we have a lot of fun today. Be with us. May your angels protect us and guard over us all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. And what happens is, is that we so pursue comfort that we'll actually try to dodge any kind of opposition so that we can take the path of least resistance. Like it's our, it's become the way that we think. So here's how it plays out. You know, you're at the party. Hey, I don't mind, I'll, I'll smoke and drink that like everybody else is smoking and drinking that because I don't want to stand out. I actually want to fit in with everybody else. Somebody tells a sexist joke or a racist joke and instead of you rising up, standing up and saying, hey, no, 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 that's not right. We don't speak like that. You don't say anything because you don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. Or maybe at work, you're, you're what's called a secret agent Christian. Like you, you, I don't want anybody to know that I'm a believer in Christ because if I am, they'll talk to me different, they'll treat me different, they'll make fun of me, they'll exclude me. So we just kind of, we blend in instead of stand out like God has called us to be. In fact, here's what I want to do today. I want to actually show you two different cycles and in these two cycles, I want you to be honest with yourself and identify which one best represents your life this last week. And here's the first cycle. It begins with chasing after comfort. So I just want to be happy. I just want to enjoy my life. I'm just looking for great ease. So I chase after comfort. Well, anytime that you chase after comfort, in order for that to ma be maintained, you always have to avoid opposition. 
So I'm going to avoid it. Like, I don't want anybody upset at me. I want everybody to have a good time around me. I'm going to be a people pleaser. I'm going to avoid opposi- opposition. And whenever we do that, it actually begins to weaken our faith because you don't stand for anything. You're not passionate for anything. Your faith weakens and it actually leads to a life that is empty. To which the emptiness drives you to chasing comfort and the cycle repeats itself again and again. Now there's another path, another cycle, and I'm just going to have to warn you right up front here. That in order for this second cycle to live out in your life, you're going to have to recognize that this earth is not your home. That you are just passing through. That you are an alien and a stranger here. And that you serve a king whose values, whose standards are very, very, very different than this world. Like his standards come alongside and he says that when people curse you, you bless them. When they hate you, you love them back. Like we have a king whose standards are very, very, very different than this world. And therefore this second cycle is going to be very, very different than the first one. And it actually begins with you dying to your flesh and standing boldly for Christ. And I'm gonna tell you this, that when you live boldly for Christ, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna begin to face adversity in your life. Like there's gonna be attacks on you, things are gonna come against you. But the incredible thing is that when you face adversity, it should be an indicator that you're actually in the game. You're making a difference. And whenever you face opposition and adversity, here's the incredible thing that begins to happen. Suddenly, your faith begins to become strong. Your faith is strengthened. See, here's what I need you to know. When your faith is strengthened, all of a sudden now, You are living your life in a way that God has has really always intended for you to live. See, the devil is such an idiot. He thinks, my goodness, if I I give them opposition, if there's adversity in their life, they're going to pull away. But he doesn't realize is this, that when you have resistance, when you have opposition, that's what helps make you stronger. You think about being in a gym. When you have all kinds of weight that you are pushing, what happens? Your muscles rip, they tear, and your body takes nutrition, and it actually builds the muscles back even stronger. And that's what happens to you spiritually when opposition comes your way. And one day you're going to actually wake up and realize, oh my goodness, I actually feel so close to God. And when that takes place... It causes you to live boldly for Jesus and the cycle repeats itself again and again. So I'm going to ask you a question. I want to put these both up at the same time. Which one best represents your life this last week? Have you been pursuing comfort, avoiding any kind of opposition? Or are you rising up? Are you being bold in your faith, living for Christ. This is the most encouraging message you didn't know you needed to hear. <laughs> you guys are quiet. Hey, amen, Chris. That's, that's really good preaching here today. Yeah. Y'all know the more you amen me, the faster I preach. You know what I'm saying? So you can be amen to me. Amen, amen. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be out to Piccadilly Cafe and we'll, we'll be at the church down the street there. So... So here's what Peter says here in verse number 19. And, and I love this. It's probably my favorite verse in all of the book of 1 Peter. He says, if you're suffering in a manner that pleases God, and in fact, would every one of you, would you read the rest of this verse out loud with me? Come on, read it out loud. Keep on doing what is right and trust your lives to the God who created you because he will never fail you. Never. In fact, let me tell you the very first time that I actually lived this verse out. I just sold out to God with all of my heart. 
I was in high school, senior year. I, I, I didn't know if I was gonna be passing my English class, which I needed to do that to be able to get my diploma. And so my English teacher gave us an assignment, closing assignment for the year, write a paper and speak it to the entire class of the most important thing that happened to you while you were in high school. Now here's the thing about my life uh, and, and my teacher, she actually was not a Christian and actually very hostile towards anything that had to do with God. So my answer to this question was very simple. It was easy. Greatest thing, most important thing is that I sold out to God. Like I went from death to life. Jesus transformed my life. I mean, he made me new on the inside beyond a shadow of a doubt. But if I were to speak that and write that, I might not pass my test. And then what are all my other classmates? What, what is my teacher going to think if I actually get up and I speak this? What am I going to do? See, um, I knew that God had called me to do the right thing and leave the results with him. But I didn't know, should I be politically correct and just tell them what they want to hear, get my diploma, graduate, pass the class, and then tell them all about Jesus? Or should I stand up and tell them the truth? Well, I just decided in that moment, I mean, I tell you, I wrestled back and forth and I finally made the decision. I'm going to tell them the truth. I'm going to stand for what I believe in. And there's been a principle that I've tried to live out in my life. I've not been perfect at it. But I've really tried to do this. And that is this, to do what's right and leave the results with God. What do we do? How are we going to live? We're going to do what's right. We're going to leave the results with God. I'm not going to take a shortcut. If I, if I need to have a difficult conversation, I'm going to have a difficult conversation. I'm going to do what's right, and I'm going to leave the results with God. Uh, if, I, if I have to stand up and confess something, then I'm going to stand up and confess something. I'm going to get things right. If I, need to have, if, if I actually need to stand up and to let people know, hey, that's not the direction that we're going, even though I might become unpopular and people might criticize me and come against me, it doesn't matter because I'm going to do what's right and I'm going to leave the results with my God. That's how I'm going to live my life. That's how God has called you to live your life. It's the most encouraging message that you didn't know that you needed to hear today. In fact, um, how many of you are curious as to what happened with that class? Anybody want to know kind of what happened here? All right. Some of you are going like, well, tell me what happened in that class. <laughs> well, I wrote the paper and I stood up in front of my class. And I talked about how Jesus changed my life. I actually gave the gospel presentation in it. And I wish I could tell you today that everybody in the class came to Christ and I got an A plus on my assignment. <laughs> and that didn't happen. Um, I can tell you that I passed the class. But honestly, it doesn't even matter. What matters is, is that we do the right thing. And we're going to leave the results with God. We're going to leave them with God. Let me tell you something. If you are going to be a Christ follower you are going to have to be different than the rest of this world. You can't just blend in with the rest of the world. It's time for somebody to stand out, to get off of the bench and get in the game and begin to make a difference with the one and only life that God has given you. Like, if you are a Christ follower, we're gonna be different. We're gonna be different in how we raise our kids. We're gonna be different in how we spend our money. We're gonna be different in our morals. We're gonna be different in how we work. We're going to be different. We're, we're gonna rise up and we're gonna be who it is that God has called us to be. The salt and light in a very dark world. We're not gonna be judgmental. We're not gonna be bigots. We're, we're, we're not gonna be intolerant. In fact, we're gonna love people with the love of Christ in real tangible ways, but we won't back down and away from truth. Ruth. Amen. I've actually had a number of people here recently that have come to me and asked me, they said, hey, Chris, man, it just really feels like there's been this uptick in persecution against Christians here in America. Does that scare you? And my answer is, no way. Not in the least, not one bit, not one iota. 
nothing. I am not scared at all about persecution happening and beginning to increase in the lives of Christ followers here in America. In fact, honestly, it gets me excited. It really does. Because persecution never hurts the church. It never hurts. In fact, the church thrives and grows in the middle of persecution. Do you know the fastest growing Christian nation on the planet? It's Iran. The place that has some of the greatest persecution against the Christians. I'm telling you, persecution for the church is a good thing because it causes us to have to drill our roots down deep into the things that actually really matter. And so I want you to see these two cycles one more time back to back. I want you to look at them. Which one best represents you this last week? Are you pursuing comfort? Avoiding opposition? And at the end of a life, it's just, yeah, you had fun. Yeah, you got to go do a bunch of things. But you ended up living a life that really didn't even matter. You didn't make a difference. But I don't believe that's you. I believe in this place, there's a, an army that God is raising up that are saying, God, we're gonna live boldly for you and we don't care if we face opposition. We're gonna join with our, our brothers and sisters all around the world and those of, those of old. And we're gonna live boldly for Christ. And what the enemy doesn't know is that when he opposes us, man, we actually get stronger and it leads us closer to God. We're gonna live a life that makes a difference. And so Peter says this in verse number five, chapter chapter five. And I love how Peter kind of wraps up this letter as he writes to these badly hurting Christians. He says, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time, he's gonna lift you up in honor. And then watch what Peter says here. Give all of your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. And I want to just pause there for a moment. Because I know that there are many people that I'm speaking to today right now that you're experiencing great hurt in your life. You're going through great difficulty. There's a couple in the church that Tatum and I are walking with right now that they had a tragic death that happened this here recently. And honestly, our hearts are are breaking for this couple. There There are people that mean so much to Tatum and I. We love so much. And they're literally walking through hell. <laughs> like hell. I can just tell you that sleep has been hard for us recently. Because we keep praying for them. And what I've I've come to realize sitting in this seat as a pastor is that I am privy to a lot of different insights into people's lives and what you walk through. And what would actually shock you is that if every one of us to really just pull back the veil and just go, hey, let me just tell you what's actually really going on in my life, you would be shocked the pain, the tragedy, the difficulties that so many people are walking through right now. You'd actually treat one another. We'd all would. We'd we'd treat the people around us a, a whole lot better if we actually knew what was really going on. And you know, when you experience these difficulties, Peter said, give it to God. One translation says, cast your cares on him. You know that in the Greek, that word cast is a fisherman's term. It's the process that a fisherman casts his net out on the water. That's the word. God's challenging you and I. Don't Don't just ruminate on those things. Cast it. Give it to God. 
And then Peter closes out this entire letter here in verse number 11. And he said, so after you've suffered for a little while, this is what our God's going to do for you. He will restore you. He'll support you. He'll strengthen you. He'll place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen. Let me tell you something. Just because you're suffering doesn't mean that you're not making an impact for Christ. In fact, it's probably a great indicator that you're making a difference, that you're not sitting on the bench, that you are in the game, that you are living for God. Let me just remind you today, don't be surprised when you face difficulties. Don't be surprised when you have adversaries that come against you, when there's opposition coming against your life, your family, your marriage, your business, your thoughts, your emotions, your health. Don't you dare be surprised by any of those kind of things. Because when they come, we're going to keep on doing what's right. We're going to keep doing what's, what's right. And God's going to do what's right. He's going to stand on your behalf. We're going to trust God. We're going to leave the results with our great God. And after a while, after you've suffered for a little bit, and there will be some suffering, our great God's going to come and he's going to restore you. He's going to support you. He's going to set your feet on a firm foundation because you need to know that your God has never left you. He is with you. He is with you. All praise and glory and honor to our incredible God and all the people in the house. Come on, say amen and amen. So before I pray for you today, I really felt like the Lord had two different kinds of responses to this message. Yes, there are those, and I will pray that God gives you strength and courage to be able to rise up in the area of your life he's been speaking to you. But there's others of us that we actually need to take a step. For some of you, it's time for you to get off the bench and get in the game. And if the Lord has been speaking to you about that, I want to give you that opportunity. If you want to join the dream team, I'm going to ask you to text volunteer to 51010. In fact, if you guys could put that on the screen, uh, text volunteer to 51010. And I would love for you to have that opportunity to be able to connect in with what God has for your life. You know, as long as we keep making excuses, we'll rarely make a difference. I could tell you all kinds of reasons why I don't think I can do what I do. But that's where it takes us an opportunity to trust God in faith and step out and say, okay, God, I'm going to give you an opportunity. And for some of you, this may be the biggest step you've ever taken in your life, and I'm going to promise you this. We're going to do our very best job to steward the gift that's on your life. You're valuable. You're precious. God's going to use you. You're going to live a life that matters. So do me a favor. Why don't you bow your heads, Jesus? In your mighty name, I just pray for every person that's here today. Give us your strength and your boldness, I pray, to live out what it is you've called us to live. You've called us to be difference makers. You didn't call us to warm a seat. You called us to be in the game and to allow the God of the universe to flow through our life, to touch this hurting this hurting world to show your love just like you did for us to them so use us I pray we, we give you our whatever we have the best that we know how we ask you God please use our lives in Jesus mighty name and with heads bowed and eyes closed if you're here today and you are away from Jesus you need to know he loves you and he gave his life for you. He did something for you that nobody else is standing in line to do. He sacrificed his everything. He left heaven, came to this earth, humbled himself for you. And I know you sometimes feel like, man, I'm just so far away from God, and I just, God can't be all that pleased with me. Can I just tell you that he loves you just like you are? But he loves you too much to, to allow you to stay like you are. 
This is your time to finally surrender to him. And so, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Just say, Jesus, I give you my life, all of it. I give you my sin. I ask you to forgive me. Make me new. In fact, Jesus, I I pray that you would make me so different that that the world won't even recognize me. And I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are the Son of God. And I thank you, God, for hearing my prayer today. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And all God's people, come on, say amen. Amen and amen. Come on, everybody. Can we just celebrate so many that have made that great decision for Jesus? God bless you, everyone.